All right, guys, so today's video is gonna be me showing you how to inject some air conditioning refrigerant UV dye into your AC system to help you identify some leaks using a black light that will make the dye glow. Now, we've got a vehicle coming into the shop later this afternoon where it's actually gone to, I think, two or three different shops where it's had the refrigerant topped off, and then subsequently the refrigerant will last about a month or so before the system no longer blows cold. And so when I inquired on what type of leak detection that they used, one was a shop used a electronic leak detector, couldn't find anything. Another shop used soap and bubbles and couldn't find anything. And it actually shocked me that they never bothered using this awesome tool, um, which is a UV black light and a UV uh, luminescent dye. So let's dive right in when the sh car shows up and we'll show you how it's done. Before we, uh, inject the dye into our air conditioning system we need to locate the service valve on our vehicle and usually you can find them um, under these service caps that say h and l which stands for low side high side since we're just injecting a tiny bit of refrigerant to get the compressor running again uh, we're just going to put it through the low side and before we attach our couplers we just want to make sure the fitting is clean on the suction end or low end and then taking our quick connect we're going to click that on but not turn that knob to open the valve just yet. Now we're gonna open up either the yellow hose or the low side hose off of our manifold gauge, and we're gonna put approximately five milliliters of UV dye into the system. Now the dye that I'm gonna be using in this system is made by AC Pro, and it meets the SAE J2297 specification, uh, such that it's compatible with R134A and R12 systems. And a one ounce bottle can do up to four UV injection uh, tests, if you will. Now, on average, you put about seven mils or about a quarter ounce uh, into one AC system. You only ever need to dose the system once. Um, you don't want to overdose the system with too much dye because it actually hinders the lubricant's ability to lubricate the system properly. So adding more does not actually have any added benefit. Now, on the back of the bottle, you can see that there's actually these graduated sections. So there's one, two, three, and then the last bit would be your fourth dose. So you can do up to four AC systems with it. I just used a small syringe right here, and I've got about five and a half mils of it um, in here. Now, if you're using the syringe method just to keep things tidier, it's easier to put into the hose. Um, you want to make sure that you're using a new syringe that's never been contaminated with water, oil, or dirt because that can end up in your AC system. In my case here, because I have these uh, Schrader valve uh, charging hoses that I'm going to take off my suction line and I'm just going to inject a little bit here into the low side. And then I'm going to screw that back onto my manifold. So this is a pretty bright garage, but just to give you an idea of how effective UV dye is over say an electronic leak detector is that this residue in this paper towel, I'm using a blue light and you can see how much that glows. It's almost eerie looking. Again, really bright garage. And just look at that intensity here. So that will really help highlight where our refrigerant is leaking from. So before we open up any valves to the system or to our charging tank, we wanna make sure that the manifold valves are fully closed and making sure that this valve depressor isn't actually engaged. So counterclockwise fully screwed up means it's not pressing the Schrader. The next step, of course, is hooking it up to the charging cylinder and fully opening up the vapor valve. And then the next step is to fully depress the Schrader by turning the depressor um, all the way to the right. So we're gonna start the car, turn the AC on full, fan on high. Okay, so with the car running, see if the compressor is actually engaged. Now the compressor on this car is at the very front on the bottom here, and you can see that the clutch is enabled. So meaning it is pumping refrigerant into the system. So now, we look at our manifold gauges, and we see that our suction pressure is very low. It's only at about uh, 12 PSI on the low side. So we're just gonna now add refrigerant. And what that's gonna do is that it's going to add the dye into the air conditioner. And we don't need a lot, maybe a quarter pound to maybe half a pound of gas. So just a little bit to get the system to start feeling cold. You saw that was open for less than maybe 10 seconds. And on the inside of the vehicle, we can already feel the air vents 
starting to get cool again, meaning that refrigerant is circulating through our system. We're holding at 20 on the low side steady. Our gauges are closed. We're going to shut off the vapor on our tank here. And then we're gonna undepress the Schrader on our quick disconnect so that we're no longer pressing the valve down. And then we're gonna disconnect it and then replace the system cap. Now you can see there's actually a little bit of dye Fitting, and that's expected because that's where you put the dye in. It's glowing. So if there's going to be a leak in any of our lines, you're going to see that bright yellow glow. But in the meantime, replace the system caps. All right, guys. So it's been several days now since I injected that dye and the air conditioner is still actually blowing cold with the tiny amount of refrigerant that we added along with the dye. But we know that over time that it's going to lose its charge. So it's a very small leak. So I've got a nifty UV light here and in my darkened garage and it's pretty late in the evening now. We're going to shine our light in the various spots here. So here we've got our condenser just behind this front grill. Now normally when you see a leak, like what I showed earlier with the uh, dye on the paper towel and bottle that it should glow like a radioactive yellow very easily. So we're just gonna shine our light in front here where the condenser is. So in front of the radiator is actually the air conditioning condenser or the radiator, I guess, for the AC system. And right now we don't really see any obvious traces of any yellow dye whatsoever. So you'll see the odd yellow spot there, which is a dead bug. So just be aware of that. Um, but so far, nothing, right? So now the next obvious spot is gonna be the service valves. So the low side here, you can see it's glowing this yellow color and it's because that's where we put the dye in and my fingers had some on it. So that's why it's glowing. Now on the high side, we didn't open that up. There's no dye. And of course the connection joints going to the evaporator coil against the firewall. You know it has a bit of glow but that's corrosion glowing not a dye so we're gonna inspect the various lines here and see at the joints especially these crimp joints whether or not we see any yellow and so far nothing now you'll see here that we also have this foam on the high pressure liquid line sometimes you have to peel them back because occasionally you'll get a leak in just behind there and those are kind of harder to find and we're going to follow our line set down to our compressor. And so far, nothing there, nothing on the fitting. So we look on the other side. And oh, lo and behold, we have a ton of dye here on the suction side, it looks like. No, on the liquid line. That's the liquid line right here um, that's leaking. So there was no dye there when I first uh, shone this light on, when we first put the dye in. And you can see it's all yellow. So, and it's spilling over all over the compressor even, but it's very obvious there. So it looks like we found our leak. We're looking down at all the other joints and I'm gonna double check here, but it's pretty obvious to me that the O-ring, because that's where it's mating on the body of the compressor is leaking. So. Worst case scenario is that if you don't find any dye on any of the lines, then likely inside the passenger compartment, the evaporator coil is more than likely leaking. So if you find nothing on the outside, then odds are that leak is inside the car and that's a pain to replace on this vehicle. So look at the obvious spots. The fix for this, of course, is we're going to evacuate, recover the charge on the system. We're gonna start out by replacing the two O-rings on our compressor because if one goes, there's a good chance the other one's probably going bad. And then we're going to add a little bit of PEG 46 or Nipendenzo 8 oil back in the system because it's obviously been leaking several times now. And uh, basically evacuate and recharge the system with the prescribed weight from the factory of R134A.